This is the second video in a three-part series as part of the Larger Streets of Paris project. In this video, I'll cover how to make various pastries from polymer clay. Some of the techniques mentioned will have been covered in the chocolates video before this one, so I won't go into them in detail. I'd like to kick off the pastry section by talking about making berries and because I used a lot of that in the pastries and first talk about the clay. Um, I mixed my own colors. I started for the strawberry is just a red, just a regular red and the clay I bought was already this color and to get it a little darker for the cherries I came in and added some more purple. So I just added a little bit at a time until I got it the shade that I wanted and then when it came to the raspberries I added even more purple and so that kind of gave me the three shades of the red, redder, and reddest. And then when I did the, um, the clay for the blueberries and the blackberries, the blueberries I used again the purple and then I used blue. And that took the purple in a little of blue color, a blue shade. And then, and I don't know how well you can see the difference in the colors on the camera, but um, there are, there's quite a bit of difference between these two. And then for for the um, blackberry, I came in with a purple again, and then I added black. And again, same thing, just start with a little bit until you get it where you want it. So those were my colors. And then to make, we'll start here with the, um, with the raspberry. To make the raspberry, all I did was pinch off very, very tiny, tiny pieces, about as tiny as I could work with, of, of, uh, of the uh, clay, and just roll them into balls. This is so simple. And they don't all have to be exactly the same. You know, and if you get it too big, just pinch it in half. And you end up with a whole bunch of balls here, as you can see all these. You end up with a whole bunch of little balls. And then all you're going to do is just put them all together. And they want to kind of stick together anyway. So you just kind of put them all together, pinch them together a little bit, pick up more balls, and just use however many that you need for making whatever size raspberries you want. And I just keep picking up, you can see there, more balls and just kind of mushing it together a little bit to make it look a little bit more rounded. So I've got all these little raspberry balls and I can come up with something like that. And so that's how I would make something like you see on the top of this, um, something how also you see around on this tart on the outside, or maybe something that you do on something a little bit smaller. So very, very simple. And then um, the blackberry is gonna be the same way got the blackberry color there and I pinched off a whole bunch of really tiny ones they're a little slightly big a slight bit bigger than the the ones I did for the raspberries but not much and again I'm going to put them all together and the only difference is you want a little bit more of an oblong shape than the raspberry so it's not so it's not so uh, completely rounded and you want to get something that looks like this and so again, you just add as many balls as you need to create something that's a little bit fatter on one end than the other, a little bit more elongated. And then you've got a raspberry for the top of things. And then um, the next thing would be a blueberry, which gets even easier. All you need are smaller balls. Now these, are, of course, are bigger than each of the little blackberry balls or any of the little tiny raspberry balls. You can see the difference in size there. And so, except the only difference is this one, you just have it by itself. You know, that's all you need to do is just pinch some of it off and make a round, uh, round it up. And then you need to go ahead and indent um, the center of it, which, um, hang on, I'll get my tool. I use the same kind of tool I use for scoring. And all I do is just push down a little hole in the top of it. You can see that. So it's just a little indentation. I find this easier to do once I actually put it on whatever I'm gonna put it on. So here you can see a row of these and you can see there's a little indentation. So for me, it's easier to put it on and then press the little hole because then you're trying to, you know, you're trying to hold it and you're trying to press it and it makes it just a little bit awkward. So that's just your basic blueberry. And then for cherry, we're talking about something that's a little bit bigger than the blueberry. And again, it's just a round ball and again, come in and press it, make a little indentation. 
And the only other extra thing that I will do is I will take this little tool here. It's really sharp on the end, which if you don't have that tool, you can just use a needle. And I come in here and I go like that and just create that little crease that you see on a cherry. And then there I've got it. And then if I want to, I can also add um, a little stem, which would be, say like here, I used a piece of um, wire just as a stem inside the cherry to give it a look like it's still got its stem in. The next thing is the strawberry, which is a little bit more complicated than just rolling balls. And I've got two different ones that I'm using, one that would look like you just cut off the top of it so that it could stand. And then another one that is, is if you sliced it a little bit or it was still you know regular size and it was just laying on top of something like this. And you can do it with or without the greenery. And this is another opportunity to tell you how useful this thing is. If, you, if you're making something and you need to make sure that most of them are the same size, then by using something like this, you can use it as, say, a measuring cup or a measuring spoon in that you can use this to punch out a bunch of clay, and the clay that you start with will always be the same size. So you'll end up getting the same size item. Or even if that's, this is too much, and you, you, know, you figure out first, like, how much do I actually need? and that's too much and say, well, you know, you need about half that. Well, then all you have to do is um, come in and just slice it in half. And then that way, again, you're, you're, it's easier to ensure that you're getting the same size clay to work with each time. So I do that a lot, that's very useful. Now, in terms of this, this one, the more 3D looking one, you know, if you think Hershey's Kisses, so I basically take a round one and I just smash it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, shape it. So I want one end to be sort of pointed and I want one end to be fatter. And so basically I'm going to come in here and I'm going to smash the end now that I did it. So I went like that, just smashed it. I got something looks like that. Now I want to make one end long, kind of pull it out, make sure it's long like that. See, and then this other end, I want it to be blunt more like that. So I'm making something that looks Kind of like a Hershey's Kiss, but that general shape. And once you get it to where you like it, and you think it looks pretty much like the other one that you made, then you need to make holes in it for seeds. And the easiest way I find to do this is to take a needle and put it in one end so that you can hang on to it. And you won't be you won't be handling it, and then uh, erasing the uh, be, the uh, seeds as you make them, and then use another tool to come in here and just poke some holes, you know, just very light holes, all the way around. And I think you can see this one. You can see in the the other uh, pop out picture there that you can see all the little holes for the seeds, and then you're just going to do that all the way around. Now, um, for the other one, I'm going to start with the same thing. I'm going to smash it. And I want to make the same shape. It's just I'm going to keep it smashed. I'm going to keep it more flat. So I'm making it a little bit rounded at the top. In this case, I haven't sliced the top off like this one is to be standing up on this, um, on this little cake. This time, it's going to be the whole strawberry. So I'm not going to smash it. I'm going to keep that end rounded. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still kind of pinching this down this way. You can always put it down if you need to and just give it another tap down to make sure you're getting that look. And just keep working it a little bit with my fingers until I think I've got it pretty much looking like the one I already did. And once I do, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a pin so if you didn't have a tool like this that had a really sharp point, you just use two pins, use two, um, these are needles, actually sewing needles. And just keep that and hold it in place. And again, you're gonna poke your holes to make it look like it's got seeds. And then the next thing you can do is um, you could add some greenery. And you see, I've got this little, this little uh, very small thin rope of, of clay, which I could not roll it that thin. I'm sure there are people who can, but I could not. And that's when the extruder comes in handy because uh, so they've got such these tools that have such small holes. So that's what I did to get this. I just ran the green, um, put the green clay in the extruder, and I believe I used this one here. 
and it gave me these little tiny ribbons. And then all I did to get the greenery here is you just want to cut off a little bit of it. Just a little pinch of it. To me, this is the hardest thing is to get this, oops, sorry, wrong one, is to, I just, you can't see that, I'm sure. Um, I'll do one where you can see it. I basically just cut it off and I'm going to use three. Is that rolled over there? Let's see, maybe a little longer than that. Okay. And then I'm just going to get it, touch it with that, and then give it a little mish down. And then add another one. So I'll add three all together. And pick it up because I cannot pick these teeny things up with my fingers. There may be people who can, but I cannot. And then I'm just going to smish the top and just smish them down a little bit. And I end up with some greenery at the top and they don't all have to look the same. So you can see that there and you can see how I've got all the greenery on the top of these. I know this has already been baked on top. Um, now there's a couple other options for color. In this case, I actually started with red clay. Another option is to um, color white clay which may look a little bit more realistic. And the reason being is if you look at strawberries, a lot of times they're, they're kind of lighter at the top around where the, um, the little greenery is. And, uh, and it's not just blood red all the way down. So if I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use some chalks. And actually this has been baked, but I would do this before I baked it. And I would just come in and take a brush and just add some paint to it, so um, not some paint, some chalk. We just add chalk to it. And this would go on a little bit thicker if this were not baked. And I would just keep brushing it until I got it as dark as I wanted. And then it would, I'd leave it a little bit lighter at the top. And I believe um, that is what I did. I think I have an example here to show you. Uh, maybe you don't, maybe I'll, I'll make one up, a finished one. But anyway, um, so you're just going to want to use something like chalk. Chalk is so much softer. You know, you'll just get a nicer look if you if you use something like a chalk. And then you can control how much how much color is on it. The other option is to come in with just acrylic paint. Don't don't bake acrylic paint because it tends to come out bad. It, it can bubble. So if you're going to paint something with acrylic, then do it after you bake it. And also, if you're doing something like this, thin it out really thin before you paint it because you don't want you want the paint to go inside all of the little seeds and, and, the, and then fill that in and you can't see that at all. So if you just water it down a bit and then just slowly put coats of paint on it, then it will, it will look good. Actually, I think this one may be ones that I did the, I did the clay on or I did the, um, the chalk on. And if you look in here right inside, see in the picture, you can see how up there where the, where the greenery is, it's, it's a lot clearer. It's a lot, um, I'm sorry, a lot more lighter color you know, almost white. One of the simple pastries that I made are these. And what I did was I used this wafer type um, mold and you get this little wafer, which you could, you could uh, just use it by itself and do something with it. But I used two of them and put a cream filling in between. And I'll just show you a really easy way to work with these molds. And um, once you get it all packed with your clay, I'll do this again on a bigger mold so it's easier to see. This one, you know, small ones, it's easier to not over, overload it because you can always kind of pull some of it off. But the way to get a really nice and flush one, and I'm, I'm really packing it in here tight because you do want to make sure that you get that wafer look on it. And if you don't pack it really tight, you might not. So what I do is I come with my blade and then I'm just going to shave off the excess. I'm just going to run the blade gently across the top of the mold and take away all the excess. And then I can just use my finger and just pull in any of the little tiny bits, pull those towards the mold or, or towards the clay in the mold. And then um, to get it out, I just bend the mold, put my finger behind it like that, bend it, and then pop it out. And there you go. And then I bake it. Um, for the filling, of course you could use a polymer clay for the filling and then you might wanna put it in there ahead of time. You can see the little fillings that I have here. Or like I did, I used the air dry clay because I thought it looked more like a filling since it's so fluffy. And um, 
I pinched off bits of it. Let's say I'm going to do chocolate. And you might, in this case, this stuff is not so easy just to use a cutter to make them all equal. So you might want to come up with figuring out, like, how much of this do I need to fill this up? You know, just pinch off what you don't need and just use the first one as an example. And then just figure out, okay, how much of this stuff am I going to need to fill this up with? And this doesn't have to be pretty because it's a cream filling. So, you know, it, it might spill out and squirt over and all that kind of stuff. So once you figure out how much you want, I still think that's probably just a little too much. Then, actually, I should try not using the one with the clay, but one that's already baked. Um, once you figure out how much you need and how, if you like the look, then take it back out, roll it in a ball, and then just try to make some balls the same size. And then you know you get about the same cream filling in each one. Now, the nice thing about this clay is that um, when you put it in here, it may not seem like it's going to stick, but it will. Once it dries, it will be stuck together and you will not be able to pull it apart. So you just want to put it in and then set it aside and let it dry. Once they're dry, you could, uh, you could add some decorative stuff on the top, like the canes that I've done. In this case, uh, I didn't I didn't bake any of the canes uh, because as I talked about in the last video, um, they're so tiny and they'll dry out over time anyway and I don't plan on handling these. So um, I didn't worry about baking them. But if you did need to bake something that you're gonna put on top, you might want to um, put it on the wafer before you bake it on the whatever's gonna be the top wafer put whatever decoration you want on that, bake it, and then uh, that will be good for when you stuff it. Another option for a simple pastry is to use the uh, bunt cake, mini bunt cake mold that I used in the last tutorial to make these little uh, bitty pastries. And to that, I added uh, some of the fruit or that I made the berries, or you could also do like you see with the cherries, add a little bit of clay either polymer clay or the air dry uh, clay in between just to create a really simple uh, little pastry. You can see two more simple options for little pastries. In the front, I have used a cane that I've cut um, pretty thick and then on top of it put a little row of cherries. And then in the, in the back, you can see um, the little pastries where I used the uh, mold that looks like cookies and you saw me use that last time to make some of the chocolates. And on top of that, I've added some brown micro beads and then just a little uh, fluff of the uh, polymer white clay. And I think I used the air dry clay for this. Continuing on with the uh, easier options, uh, you can see here what I've done. In the first two rows on the trays, I've just created little mini stacks of polymer clay. Um, in the front, I've got the two pinks with the white in the center and then the orange in the back with the white in the center. So, And then on top of that, you can see that I have put on a, a little slice of the cane of the orange and then just the swirl design. And to make those stacks, I just used the punches that you saw me use last time in the chocolate tutorial. I used the square one and then the round one just to punch the shapes out and stack them and then put uh, put the, the fruit or the other design on top. It makes you know very, very quick, simple, easy little pastry. The next set of tools I want to introduce you to are cutters. These are made for cutting clay and um, there's different sets. There are more than one uh, set available and I know you can find them online. You probably can find them in some craft stores and they're just nested sets of sizes. So, you know, you've got something like these uh, diamonds or oblong shapes or circles, just all kinds of different shapes, triangles, all kinds of different stuff in here and squares as well and some of these I've gotten from two different sets um, so like this larger one came from something else but anyway it makes it really easy to cut out different shapes and the first thing I want to show you is something very simple where I'm using this square um, cutter and what I've done with a square cutter is I have cut out some thin pieces of clay now I ran these through the um, pasta machine to get them flattened out and, and all the same same size. So they're very, very thin. I don't know if you can see the thinness here, but they're really thin. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll them into this kind of a shape. And pretty simple. Just bend one to the other and touch them. And you've got a little shape and just make sure that it's open inside like that. 
Then the next thing I do is, um, before baking them, I go ahead and brush them with more of the, um, the chalk. So I brush them with different uh, browns of the chalk. And you, actually, it's a little bit hard to see here because I've already gloss, put the gloss on it. But just to darken it up and make it look, you can see maybe a little bit easier there, just to make it look like it's been baked. So it's not so light like this, and it has a variation of color. Uh, I'll show you one of these. That one, you can even see it better. So I'll go ahead and bake these. And then once they're baked, and here's a chocolate one that's already baked, then I came in and I stuffed it with the air dry clay on each side. So I'm just uh, making a small ball of the air dry clay and then just inserting it into the hole. Now you could use the polymer clay, the uh, bake kind. The only, only thing I don't like about using that is it's kind of hard to keep it in its shape while you're stuffing it with something. So it just, using the, um, the uh, air dry clay, it just made it a lot easier to just wait until it was baked and then stuff it with whatever color you want to put in. And then uh, the last step, I will uh, glaze it, put a glaze on it. And what I use for that, and you can see here I've got some stuffed with different colors. So lemon and lime and, and uh, raspberry, and uh, this would be strawberry. And so, um, what I do to glaze this is I just use glossy accents. It's simple. I have lots of it around. I use it for everything. So I just squirt some of this into uh, like a little lid of a, a bottle lid and uh, just use a paintbrush and paint it, paint it on and just give it a little bit of a gloss. So I think you can see, hopefully you can see in the camera, the little gloss that's on it. So it's just got this little glaze on top of the pastry. And of course you could add something else. You could put some stuff on top of here too, like a berry or some other decorative element right here in where the center where they come together. Now to make little pastries like these, I'm first gonna start with some clay and I'm going to punch out using one of these punches, a circle. And then I'd like the edges to be smoother than they are. They're, you know, they'll be pretty sharp cutting it with something like this. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of rub the edges a little bit and just round them out so that they're not so sharp, my finger. And once I get it where I want it, then the next thing I'm gonna do is add texture and I'll do that by using a toothbrush and I will just pound it and brush it. And then that way that will add texture to any of the clay that's still going to be exposed when, um, after I put the fruit on it. And I don't know if you can see, let's see if you can see better on that one. I don't know if you can see that in the, uh, in the camera. But uh, so once I do that, then I want to put some color on it to make it look like it's cooked and browned. So I'm going to use the chalk again to just brush it using various colors, uh, browns and tans and whatnot. And I'm brushing everything that I think I need to be covered. And so I end up with something that looks like this. And even after you brush it with the chalk, you can go back in and do some more with the toothbrush and add some more, add some more chalk, whichever you'd like to do. Now, um, I can either bake this and then uh, add the fruit after the fact, um, having already baked the raspberries and the blueberries here. And these are canes. These are me slicing the canes. Or I can actually add those and bake everything. And the way I would do this is I will use the Filmo liquid glue the clear and it does look it has a little bit of a color to it but it's it's uh, it will dry clear and I use this as a glue so what I would do is pour a little bit of this in you know on a piece of plastic or whatever and take a, a paintbrush and just apply a little bit on and then use that to stick each one of those things on top of each other and keep them in place while they're baking it's not really a glue but the moisture the, the liquid uh, in the clay will, will give you kind of like a glue. And it's going to dry clear and matte, so you don't have to worry about that. And otherwise, uh, you'd come back in perhaps and um, glue these on after the fact. And then I went in and glossed these over again using glossy accents. So I added the gloss on top of the strawberries and, and all of these. I just thought they looked better being glossy. So that's a nice little simple pastry using the fruit. Next, I've got a little fancier version, a double decker. And this time I've used the chocolate clay, went through the same process of using the toothbrush 
and uh, just patting around the edges to give it a little like a cakey texture. And then I put a layer of strawberries underneath. Now the difference in these strawberries and the ones, the other two versions that I showed you is I kind of snipped off the tip and made sure it was a little flatter so that the top uh, piece of, of cake-like stuff could sit on top, pastry on top of the strawberries. And then uh, you can see that I've got the cherries on top of that and in the center I've got blueberries. And then I put a glaze using glossy accents on the fruit on the top. Now here I've got a much fancier version, uh, a tart, uh, full of all kinds of fruits. And to make this particular um, uh, shape, what I did is I took this, this particular punch, it's, I think it's made for biscuits or something, and I used it to um, punch out the bottom. And then I punched out two more, but this time I came in uh, with another punch on top of it and punched out the center. So that way that I could come in here and build up a wall. And so I just match up all those little, little um, indentations around the edge and uh, do that with both of them until I build up the sides like you see here. And you could, of course, you could do it in chocolate or in this. Then next, I've used the um, liquid clay and also uh, some alcohol ink. I used red pepper and I think the other one is a burgundy color. The red was a little too red and the burgundy was too burgundy. And so I've mixed up this, think of it as like a jelly or something. And I used alcohol ink because it will stay translucent. So I won't, it won't, uh, you know, it'll still look like, like you can see through jelly or jello or something like that. So it'll give you that look. And so now I've got these all put together and I've dusted them with the chalk. And so now what I'm going to do is just pour this in here for my layer of jelly or gel or whatever kind of cream, whatever you want to think of it as. Just something that looks cool. And I'm putting that in there. It should spread out. There we go. Now, um, depending on what you want to do, you could, you could um, put your fruit down in there and then bake it but I don't want my fruit to completely sink down and I also don't want the, um, the alcohol ink and all that to color um, the fruit and change it. So I'm basically going to go ahead and bake it like that and then once it's done, I will add my fruit on top. Now on this other one that's already done, what I did with that is I added um, a lighter color of kind of a, a yellow, sort of like um, when you see vanilla pudding, that color. And then I took a bunch of the, um, the uh, canes and cut them up and started on the outside laying down strawberries, then laying down limes, and then the blueberries that I made that I showed you earlier, and then lemons. Now, I don't know if you'd ever eat anything like that. That combination sounds weird, but it looked really pretty. And so that's why I did it that way. And um, I used the, uh, the liquid clay as I was putting these in place. Then I baked everything, and then when it was done, I took some glossy accents and painted all over it. I did a few coats just to get to get it really, really glossy. And then in this version here, I've done it with chocolate, chocolate or dark or brown clay for chocolate. And again, I put a lighter color. I think I actually maybe even used the Ecru color. I put that in the bottom, so for the filling. And then I came in and used all of the fruit that I showed you how to make. I used the uh, the raspberries, the blueberries, strawberries, and then in the side is a, in the middle is a blackberry. And again, I used the um, liquid uh, clay as a as a kind of a glue as I put these down, baked it, and then uh, brushed on the glossy accents after this was done. So let me go bake this, and then I'll show you how it turns out. Now that it's finished baking, you can see the jelly-like texture that you end up with. And I didn't want to cover it up too much because I wanted to be able to see that. So I decided just to add some whipped cream and cherries. Now, the way I created those little dollops of whipped cream was to first measure out using uh, the cutter equal amounts of white clay. And then I just molded it into kind of a little cone. Think of, you know, like a Hershey's Kiss that kind of shape. And then, um, of course, the, you see me do the cherries. And I baked all that separate and then glued it on top in place. And so now you can see the uh, finished, finished tart. Next up is uh, an apple tart. And I'm going to show you how to make these little slices of apple that make this tart up. Now, the base is a very simple base, and it's made from this mold. Um, 
And I'll mention this now too, that, that these molds, uh, most of the molds that you buy, you can bake, bake the clay in the mold. And I'm gonna show you one here in a minute where you will have to do it that way. Um, so anyway, I just baked a bottom like this. Uh, and of course I, I did like I usually do. I, I used the chalk on it just to uh, brown it up a bit. And then to make the little slices, what I did is I used the extruder and then the, uh, the, the template I used was a little half circle. And that's what gives you this little half, half uh, the, just the little slice of the apple. And I didn't use regular clay, I used um, a translucent clay. Because if you look at things like apples and peaches, they, they're not, they don't have like a really matte look to them. Um, it's a little bit translucent. And so I ended up mixing translucent with a little bit of white. And that's what I used for the apple. And here's the, a piece of what I've extruded. Now to get the color, the little red color that you see on there, I'm gonna go in with chalk again and paint. And you know, if you were gonna do a green apple, you'd use green, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use red. Let me change brushes here, this is a better one. And so I'm just gonna paint the red on here. And of course you could do multiple colors if you wanted, you know, cause apples have a lot of different colors in them. But that's basically, if you just go over with a red, you're gonna get a nice little apple and you don't have to get fancy with it. And then you'll come in with a cutter and make very, very thin, super thin slices. And you've got your apple. Like that. Now, um, peaches are just one more step in that if you wanna make a peach slice, all you have to do is come in with, with one of these, the, the little um, cutter or the straw one we made in the first first uh, video and just cut out a little notch and now you got a peach because you got to think about the pit in the middle and so you would have kind of like a a moon slice and then what I do is usually the inside next to the um, next to the pit is darker so now I'm going to come in again with more red like this and make that much darker I can add some other colors too, like a little bit of orange. Then now I get my peach slice instead of just an apple. So then the only thing left to do is just to simply uh, put your either peach or your apple uh, symmetrically around. And all I did is wind it around and around and around and then I made the rose in the middle. Now to make a rose in the middle, and this is an easy way to make any kind of rose, not just uh, for this, and I will do that on some other ones, is just connect these little apple slices together in a line. And they like to stick together. And the more you connect together, the bigger your rose is going to be. So just one long chain of half slices. I'll get a better one over here. So I, you know, I do six, five, six. And on the side where uh, it's underneath, not the last one on the top, just start to roll that. Flip it over and roll it. Whoop, mine came apart. Hang on a second. And roll it and just keep rolling it. Until you get it all in one piece. And then, well, that one came apart. Let me just make another one real quick here. This clay has been sitting around for a bit. I cut this a couple days ago, so it's getting just a little bit dry and stiff. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can't try this again. And then I've got a little rose. And then that goes in the middle. Then I baked it. And um, this is one of these where you could bake it all together or bake this first and put the, put the apples on it, um, whichever way you wanna go. And then when I was completely done, I uh, came in with some glossy accents and just put a little glaze on the top of it. Now, if you don't have an extruder to cut uh, these shapes, of course you can always hand form the clay 
but another option would be if you do have one of these types of cutters or if you have the kind of cutter here, the, the um, one we made out of the straw, um, you can just cut through multiple layers. Of course, this metal one is going to go through more layers than the plastic one will. And then you've got this and you can cut that in half. And now you've got your half and it won't be a long piece so you won't get that many out of it but at least it's a, it's a easier way than trying to hand form it I don't know if the straw maybe it will go through yeah so that's another way to do it if you don't have an extruder just to make it a little faster and then everything ends up symmetrical if you're able to punch out the last route I have to show you is the banana and I'm just making little banana slices I used the extruder and made this uh, ribbon of off white clay. I took some white clay and added just a little bit of brown to it. And then I sliced little slices of, of the cane or the uh, ribbon. And then um, I came in with the sharp tool that you've seen me use before. And I want to make three lines in it. And this is, this is the lines you see in the center of the banana and that also that are where the seeds are. So I make three lines, just press in, indent and then to, to, um, to emphasize those lines, that I come back in with a little bit of chalk and a really fine, fine brush. And don't get too much chalk on it. In fact, I brush a little bit off before I do it. And I just accent those lines. So you can see there what that looks like. So think of kind of like a sand dollar, the way the lines are. And just make kind of equal distance apart. And then accent the little grooves that you make. And that's basically your banana, or your banana, banana, a slice of banana. Now I'm going to make, um, to put all the bananas in, I'm going to be making something that looks like this. And I think I'm going to use the chocolate. So it's using this mold. And this is a good opportunity for me to talk about these kind of molds. These type of molds that, that, you know, go where the, this part goes over part of the mold on the inside. You cannot remove the clay from the mold when it's wet. It's just, it'll tear the clay up. So basically you have to bake this in the mold. And the other tricky thing about these molds is that it is hard to get everything stuffed down in there really good and to make sure you're getting the impression of, you know, the, the, um, the stuff that's, that's down there, the ridging and everything. So what you need to do is I just roll the clay out very thin and then I just break off pieces and I start stuffing it down in there. And you really need to make sure that it's in there. And you might need to use a tool, whatever you need to do to make sure that it's all the way in there. You'd be surprised. And usually you can turn it over. You probably can't see this on the camera, but you can actually see the clay through the blue here. And so I just keep slowly stuffing more and more clay in until I get it all stuffed. And then of course, then I'm gonna add clay to the top here until it's level. And once it's level, then I'm just going to shave off whatever's left. And I will really pack and pack and pack this in. In fact, you might want to use a roller to go on top of this just to make sure everything's smooth and packed in. And then I bake it in the mold. And this is one of the molds where I bake it a little bit longer than I would normally just because it's in this mold and it's, and it's thicker. Um, by the time you do all this, is a much thicker piece. So I will bake it the 275 for 75 minutes and then, or for 15 minutes, not 75 minutes, and then I will just turn the oven off and just let it set until it cools inside the oven. So that just gives it a little bit more time. And then once it's cool, then you can pop it right out and it will keep its shape. But believe me, it will not keep its shape if you do otherwise. It will, um, you'll, you'll try to pull it out and it'll all just be a mess. So that's the way I would do that. Here you can see the uh, finished apple tart. I put some uh, kind of yellowish buttery colored clay in the bottom. Uh, and then I, on top of that, I put the a layer of the bananas. And then to, um, after I baked all that, then to give it a caramelized look, I painted it with a combination of mixing um, glossy accents with ginger and with, um, I guess, butterscotch alcohol ink. So I mixed all that up in a little bitty um, bottle cap and so that I colored the glossy accents with that and then just painted that on top and that made it look like it was caramelized. And then the decoration on the top is I just took some little strips of, uh, of the, uh, the chocolate colored clay and uh, the brown clay 
and just um, made little rolls and little swirls and just kind of piled it up in the center so it looked like it was chocolate shavings. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. At the uh, bottom in the description area, you'll find the link to the blog post that goes along with this. And on that post, you'll have the information on the new collage sheet and digital image set of the chocolate labels. You'll also find the free doily collage sheet and a digital, digital version as well. And of course, the complete detailed supply list. The next video will be the third and the final in this little series, and it will cover making cakes.